And now let's get started. Um, I will call this meeting to order. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Craig Ewers. And I'd like to announce that this uh, meeting is being Zoom recorded. Do we have anyone here this afternoon for public comment? Please raise your Zoom hand. No public comment this afternoon. We'll move on to agenda item number three, request by Blue Paws Incorporated, DBA JJ's Tavern, 99 Main Street, Florence, to amend a previously approved modification of entertainment license from June 10th, 2023 to August 12th, 2023. Um, hello, John. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Good. So this is just a scheduling change because snafu last time. No, well, yes, yeah, snafu. We had the uh, those fires uh and the guy the comedian we had was up in burlington vermont and and he said you know the weather was so bad the air was so bad and it was still bad here he did he yeah threatened to cancel or move it and we just scrambled and said cancel and yep. hopefully we're going to get the move and that yep. was it yeah no that makes total sense um anybody have any questions for john no no no, no questions would somebody like to make a motion uh sure i'll make a motion to approve the amendment to a previously approved modification of entertainment license from June 10th, 2020, 2023 to August 12th, 2023. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank All you, right. John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number four, applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music Incorporated, 274 Main Street. This is a wine and malt license with a requested fee waiver for the following dates, Thursday, July 27th, 2023, from 6 to 11 p.m. for Anthony Jeselnik. Thursday, August 3rd, and Friday, August 4th, 6 to 11 p.m. for Ilana Glazer. Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. for Mary Chapin Carpenter. And Tuesday, September 26th, 6 to 11 p.m. for the Wallflowers. Hello, Melissa. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Any changes to how things are happening? No, nope, no changes. All right. Any questions for Melissa or comments? Not for me. No, no thanks. Same. Would somebody like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses, um, along with the requested fee waiver for the Academy of Music as detailed in item four on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank yeah. you for coming, Melissa. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Item number five, application for a short-term liquor license for the Michael F. Curtin Post 8006 VFW Home Association Incorporated for Saturday, September 9th, 2023 from 12 to 8 p.m. This is for a pig roast barbecue at 18 Meadow Street in Florence, and it is an all-alcohol license that is being sought. And do we have anybody here from the VFW? So... I am going to take a wild guess and say it's 5848395. Um, seems as if they maybe can't unmute. Um, I think if you press star six on your phone, you should be able to unmute. Okay, star six, that's me. Okay. Hi there. Hi, got it. This is Tom Pease, commander at the BFW. Hi there, how are you? Good, good, good. Great. Um, do you want to let us know a little bit about your event? Okay, well, it's our, uh, I guess, seventh or eighth one that we've had outside of the ones we didn't have with COVID. And it starts at noontime, goes till eight o'clock. It's our annual pig roast and chicken barbecue. It's a fundraiser for the VFW and for the... Uh, auxiliary uh we serve the food outside there's a tent outside actually two tents and we have of course we serve the alcohol outside in a separate tent um 
my bartenders, they're all surf safe and whatever tips, whatever, whatever they need. Vanessa's got it all. So she's my steward and she handles all of that. Great. And do you sell tickets for the event in advance or can people yeah. come? To yeah, we should, we're going to start selling them after I get the okay from you. I'm going to print the tickets and start selling them. And they're $25 a head. That includes uh, the barbecue and the pig roast, all you can eat. Um, and all the fixings, right? The sweet corn and uh, uh, watermelon and what have you afterwards. So, and it's, it's 12 and under are free. Yes. Okay. All right. Are there any questions for the commander? No, I know you've done this before and all your paperwork is yeah. in order. So I don't have any. Yeah. No, I don't have any questions. No. Great. Neither do I. I hope it's a great event this year. Oh, I hope so. We may raise a lot of money and have a good time with the community. Yes. Um, is there a motion then for, for this item? I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for Michael F. Curtin, post 8006, VFW Home Association, Inc. is detailed on item five on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great, thank you for coming. Okay, yep. And uh, will, will they send me the a, a bill or something? I'll have to pay something, I, I'm sure. It's I'm yeah, sure. so Tom, <laughs> uh, I'll need, in order to get the license, you'll need to pay via most, I mean, preferably check. Yeah. I don't okay. know if Peggy can bring something down. Or yeah, something yeah, down. We'll, drop, we'll drop it off down there. Okay. okay, I'll send an email tomorrow. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Send it to her. Don't send it to me. Okay. Great. I'll do okay. that. Thanks. All righty. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Item number six, application for a short-term liquor license for the Oxbow Water Ski Show Team, July 27, 29, 30, 11 to 9 p.m. at the Eastern Regional Ski Show Tournament on Old Springfield Road in Northampton. This is a wine and malt license. And update Maybe. from Annie. Yes, they have canceled the tournament because of the water and unknown bacteria in, in the water um, and the water levels. So they no yeah. longer need this license. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Do you think they'll try and reschedule for the fall or this is a summer thing? Um, it, I don't know. It typically happens this time at the end of July. So I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Okay. All right, then uh, we don't need a motion. We can just. Yep. Just. Keep it moving. Keep moving. Okay, great. Item number seven, application for a temporary extension of premise into private property for Masa Mexicano LLC, 176 Pine Street in Florence. This is approximately um, 1,700 square feet with nine tables and 32 chairs. And do we have somebody here from Masa? I don't see Roberto. Okay. Um, yeah, I and I haven't heard, but okay he spoke about the meeting so i don't know if maybe i don't know so he has i believe he's already set up so he's already set up he he's been offering outdoor dining um yep. he doesn't have and he's applied for his seasonal wine and malt license which yep. the abcc hasn't approved yet um so when the abcc does approve he doesn't want there to be any time in between where he can't um provide beer and wine outside so he's just yep. kind of hoping to get ahead of it yeah that's fine and i think i actually noticed the other day that he has the areas cordoned off already oh yeah so he's been it's been we dropped off planters up there in may so it's been set up great um, for a while yeah okay um i don't have any issue with this we've been anticipating it after the uh application for the abcc do you have any comments no, I think I, I am fine with going ahead and approving it without him being here. Yeah. Okay, great. No, yep, I agree with that too. Wonderful. And would somebody like to make a motion? Or make a motion to approve the temporary extension of premises for Massa Mexicano LLC as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission to include approximately 1,700 square feet with nine tables and 32 chairs to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. 
Wonderful. Next item up, we have an application for a new common Vixler license and an automatic amusement device license for Nice Tea Incorporated at 211 Main Street. And this um, is a prize crane claw machine. And we have someone here from Nice Tea. John McDonald on behalf of Nice Tea and also Lynn Lee is here on the iPhone. Wonderful. Hello. Thank you both for coming. Hi. Hello. Um, do you want to let us know a little bit about your application and what you're up to? The application is a common Vic Holler license for the nice tea, tea room, 211 Main Street. I sent you guys some information on yep. to answer most of the questions. It's a small tea room, 1,440 square feet. The kitchen's um, limited to steamed food right now because there's not a, a good hood, but it's approved how it is. and um, Basically, they're selling. They're, they're just getting trying to get the license in place. Great. If you have any questions, we can answer anything you might need to know that wasn't uh, provided. Is the is the crane claw machine? That's a pay. It's a you put coins in or something, and then you it has one of those things. <laughs> I, I believe that's I, I believe that's correct. I yeah. didn't see the actual machine. Uh, Lynn, are you familiar with the actual claw machine? Did you see? Was it delivered there yet? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah, I that's think okay. It's a, I think it's a basically that um, the one you see at the uh, the Mass Pike one. You know, what I mean, the regular claw machine. That, uh, yep. It's not a wise. Uh, it's not a good investment in my, <laughs> <from> my experience. <laughs> <laughs> good investment for the owner the, the I know it's, and as soon as word is out and kids know it's there <laughs> um Jennifer and Helen do you have any questions for these folks I don't I'm just excited to, I don't think I've had the opportunity to approve an automatic amusement device uh, like, first yeah so so thank you for the opportunity Right. I have a son and we've we've heavily invested in claw machines. So okay. now I really feel like like I, I have the authority. So it's um touching. Yeah, so how do you, I don't know. Jennifer may go nay on this one. I don't know. <laughs> right. Our first amusement device and, and one of our first non-unanimous votes. <laughs> Um, I have no other comments. All the paperwork was was thorough and we appreciated what you submitted. It did answer questions. Um, would somebody like to make a motion? You want to do the honors, Jennifer? <laughs> yes, I make a motion to approve. The, I'm sorry, I'm losing my space here. We're approving the new common Victor Alert license for Nice Tea Incorporated to 11 Main Street. Um, item number 11, I'm sorry, item number eight on the agenda as well as the amusement device. We are also approving the amusement claw device. <laughs> Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Of course, yeah. thank we'll you. see you at the restaurant when you get a chance. Yes, we definitely will. I know I will. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Bye. Item. Annie, thank you very much, Annie. Oh help. yeah, you're welcome anytime. Bye bye. Item eight: applications for short-term liquor licenses. Building eight brewing, three twenty Riverside Drive for wine and malt. Saturday, July 29th from twelve to eight for a beer release, and Saturday, August twelfth from twelve to eight for a beer and food event. And is O'Brien here? Yes, I am. Hello, how are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So what are you up to? Uh, we just uh, trying to take an opportunity to be able to pour some more beer on draft. Uh, we have our like session hazy and session IPA that'll be available uh, for the first one. And then the second one, I am going to try to secure something to let me cook for the masses again. Um, tentatively framed as Senior No Bueno Por Nada Taco Shack, which means Mr. Good For Nothing Tacos. Um, but I just want to be able to serve some kind of food, me Terra taco shells, you know, uh, do a couple of types of things, very affordable, just as little added draw for people. Figure yeah. hopefully it'd be enough time there to let the uh, Board of Health approve um, my temporary food permit. But I have all the gear and people have been asking, so we'll probably do something nice like that. Mexican street corn salad, 
and just a couple of tacos, nothing too much, but, uh, and then just some regular, regular setup tables. Uh, this time we'll probably go with cafe umbrellas and not a big tent. Um, but, um, that'll be about it. And then, uh, we finally finished the banquette inside and everything. So, uh, you know, so we'll be, you know, multi-use and just trying to, trying to pour some beer. Yeah, that's great. I, um, uh, but for the other commissioners, I popped in the last time he did this and I don't know if you guys went, but the setup is really great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It looks nice inside. It's a lot more space and, uh, looking forward to be able to kind of use it as we get into the fall. And even when it's cold outside, we still, you know, be able to see 20 something people in there. So we'll, you know, kind of bill it as come and see the smallest tap room in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe how small it is. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, but we're, we're, we're still doing fine. You know, we're, we're, the store is still very busy and, uh, you know, doing well with that. And a lot of people keep taking our beer in. So that's nice. And then, um, I guess, uh, we'll see what happens. I believe there's not going to be another hearing until, uh, September. Correct. At some point. Yep. We'll be on yep. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That's why you guys make the big bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. We're going to double our salary at that anytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited that you'll have food because we do miss um, Sierra Grill. My family yeah, talks well, about it all the time. We do too. I'm actually um, in the works with the Bombix folks too. They have a uh, an event coming up with Robert Johnson's stepsister who just wrote a book about being uh, related to Robert Johnson and the guitar player from the Carolina Chocolate Drops will be playing. And I'm going to do a family style uh, Southern fair dinner after nice. the show wow. uh oh. barbecue pork chicken squash souffle corn collard greens uh mac and cheese all that kind of stuff keeping it affordable and i'm going to use their kitchen you know and everything so uh you know just to be able to be in that space and i guess during the dinner show she's 97 wow. she'll be talking so we're, we're trying to pull that together right now that's going to be at the end of august um but that'll be a fun event uh, especially just to hear what she has to say as a 97 year old stepsister to a man who sold his soul to the devil to be able to play guitar <laughs> yeah that's wow. amazing yeah anyway uh so we're just doing a couple of events and uh i mean it's tough in august to try to do stuff on the weekends i feel like a lot of people leave so we're trying to sneak one in in august and then you know before kind of and then hopefully we'll pick back up again in september and have a few more to do nice all right do we have a motion uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term short liquor licenses for Building 8 Brewing um, as detailed in item nine on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Item nine, discussion about changing the day of the week for license commission meetings. Am I just for my confusion? I'm seeing that as item 10. Am I on the wrong agenda or? I'm looking at our commissioner's agenda. Oh, because I, I guess I'm looking at revised, but I don't know. Yeah. So I, I hope I sent the right detailed an item. I mean, I guess, Annie, you will. I amend. think you did. Okay. Yeah, was there was a little pick up on numbering for nice tea. Oh, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Yeah, it went back to agenda item one, which so I just didn't oh. say it. Oh, I'm seeing six, seven, eight. I guess I'm looking at a, I don't know if I'm looking at an older version. But all the words seem to be the same. So, <laughs> so, so I'm with you. I was just confused. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, all right, so anyway, discussion. Okay, um, I mean, I know sometimes it, do it doesn't work great for you, Helen, and I think Jennifer mentioned that um, it interferes with Arrive at Five. Oh, right. Um, so, uh, the, I mean, the floor is yours. It, with me, it's it's the time of day less than the day of the week, although Mondays tend to be freer for me, but I don't know. If Mon I think we've talked about that Monday might be the most horrible day for most people. <laughs> um, and also then I guess there's no sort of advanced prep time. But um, 
So I, you know, and it's it's just seasonal for me as well. So it's summer programs. I mean, Tuesday is out um, for most of the year with the Tuesday market for me. Um, but I don't know. So I guess what would work better for you, Jennifer, and everyone else? Uh, if we move to another Wednesday of the month, it would be better for me, but I can also, um, I would also be available on Thursdays. I don't know if Thursday afternoon works for folks. Thursday's not as great for me as Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, but I can make it work. It's just once a month. Right. And I'm flexible on time. Like I, have, I think I have the most flexibility. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to accommodate whatever works better for, for you guys. Um, well, and I guess when would this start? It would, like in September, I guess. I mean, are we thinking of changing it as soon as September? Um, change it or is this? I mean, depending on what, what's decided, I, I think, it, yeah, I think it depends because if it's going to be like the first Tuesday, I think, yeah, we should change it. It for September, but if it's going to be like this second Wednesday or third Wednesday, I think we should keep the September meeting and then start in October because it's been on the calendar and we kind of we eliminated a meeting in the, this summer. Yep. Yeah, and I once we start getting into the fall, I don't know. My schedule is weird um, with all that adventure, so you know, I think it's potentially less of an issue time of day, but still Tuesdays for me through November 7th are out. Um, so, but I know we're not even talking about Tuesday. You're saying Wednesday or Thursday. So I think for or me- Monday, did somebody say Monday? I said Monday, but I think that might be all around horrible for people. Natasha said Monday. Too. I could do Monday. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. I have a rotary meeting. At noontime, I'm the president of the Northampton Rotary, and that's yes. every other Monday. So that could get hairy, but yep. I know it's once a month I can make it work. That's at um, noon. But yeah, so I'm I'm out from like uh, I'm just getting started up. But I mean, it's taking a big chunk of my time at this point. I mean, I'm I'm committed with them from like 11:30 until two, you know, every other Monday. So it's it's been yeah. quite a uh, a heavy lift to start. Maybe that will ease up as time goes on. I just wish I could foresee, and I know we all feel this way, you know, I mean, how many more four and a half hour meetings are we going to have, right? I mean, doesn't that impact? I mean, and I don't want to be insensitive to Annie's schedule too. I think she gets a vote here, regardless of what her title is. I mean, I, I'm definitely thinking of Annie with this switch as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so and Monday, yeah, I, and I won't push hard for Monday either. It's also, it's a toss up because it's also like my one free day. So I tend to schedule a lot oh, of yeah. things. Sure. Then. So, so yeah. I'm fine with sticking to either Wednesday or Thursday. You know, it's just a few more months that I think I need to make it work with my other schedule. And anyway. What uh, if we just change the Wednesday? If it's to like the second Wednesday or something. Does that work for everyone and I already forgot why because someone has something on the first because yes uh, because the yeah Northampton Chamber meets the oh, first right. Wednesday at five Annie what is your what are your thoughts um I think that's I think that's fine do you have a preference like if if you could change if you could pick the day for the meeting no a few months ago it mattered it doesn't matter anymore um so yeah let me put a wrench in it right away. Sorry, if we're starting that, are, we would we be starting that in September. No, uh, well, no. If we, or if we did what the second Wednesday, the second Wednesday. um, no, I I suggested yeah. staying with the first Wednesday in September, and then start the schedule the second Wednesday starting in October. Okay, just because of our just because we have we only had one meeting this summer and people are already planning on that September meeting. I just don't want to move the goalposts again. Okay, that works for me. It's just, yeah, if it were September, I'm gone the next 
two Wednesdays, but if it's in October, I'm all good. Okay. And I'm gone the first two Wednesdays of October. Oh. Hmm. Which I'm sure you're all going to be great. Well, you were going to, it looks like you were going to ditch us anyway, because you're okay. I, mean, I am too. I just looked at my schedule. Uh, so a Thursday it is. <laughs> no, wait, but you'd still be gone. It sounds like. I'm like gone, gone for those two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So there's always the, I mean, we could do the third Wednesday. In October, you're, you're gone the first two Wednesdays. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, as long as I won't throw off people who are getting licenses. But also you don't if it you don't need me. I mean if it's if Helen and Jeff are here. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a meeting without me. I'm not sure. I can sure come uh, back in front of us on that day. So. <laughs> Okay, did we figure it out? <laughs> I mean, it's up to you guys. If you, if, um, I guess, yeah, long term. I mean, yes, we, we can hack one meeting, but if so, if long term it makes more sense for it to be the second Wednesday, I'm down with that. But if it's just the same to make it the third Wednesday, um, you know, we could do that just to not let Natasha off the hook ever. <laughs> and then the, the third Wednesday is uh, my birthday. So I will sacrifice myself oh. on my birthday for you guys. Well, I'll eat cake in front of you because uh, Tasha's cake. trying to claim every Wednesday in October. I, I, I pretty much am. Doing. It's my month. <laughs> Should we just do everything in, at the September meeting and just skip right. like we did this time? Take another month off. Um, and remember, there will hopefully be some applications for the Eric Shore licenses right. at, at the October meeting. I'll do that on my birthday. So All day long. <laughs> <laughs> so does it throw timing to have that be the third, just to be the first Wednesday in September and the third Wednesday in October? Is that going to throw off our people um right Good licenses. well i think it's enough it's decided and with enough time in advance that i can put it on the website and yeah point to it so i guess yeah make sure people know to get their act together by september if they're looking to start something at the beginning of october right yeah yep so okay so and then do we dare look ahead at November with the holidays coming up or is that, is that too much? Oh yeah. It's the day before things. No. See, so yeah. No, it actually is not. Sorry. It's the week before. The week before I already looked. Oh, oh, okay. Good. So, um, so September 6th and then October 18th. Correct. Uh, sorry. Yes. And then go. From October 18th going forward, it's that third Wednesday. Yeah. So that's November 15th, Annie? Yep. No, uh, yeah. So October 18th, November 15th, yep. December 20th. That's okay. Um, and when four o'clock is still okay. Sure. Yes. Yeah, since we're getting into the fall, probably. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How exciting. But Annie, I want to ask you again that this is really okay for you because we can't do it without you. So I don't want to commit to anything without Annie. Yeah, no, you definitely can't do it with like you need a staffer. So, no. um, but yeah, no, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Thank you. Totally fine. Okay. Um, all right. Did that one. Where are we? Um, um we have approval of minutes for June seventh, twenty twenty three. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June seventh, twenty twenty three. 
second. And Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. And new business. I'm, unless someone has something, I'm just wondering if we can have an update on, because, you know, we had that email from Bombix about the shows going forward. Was that resolved? Um, I, I hadn't heard back the last, the last communication I sent or that they had sent was that, oh, this starts in 2024 and it's for all new, um, bookings and I replied no that's not the case and it starts now and please adjust your programming accordingly and I never I never heard anything back um I think I made the mistake of not replying all to the neighbors um but after the fact I forwarded the email thread so all the neighbors are clued in as to what they, what Bombix was maybe alleging for their license hours going forward. So I don't know. I haven't, I haven't heard anything since. Right. Yeah, because one of the concerts also was, I think they mistakenly said 2023, but I think it was January of next year. That was one that they included in that list. Which I found striking. Um, anyway, so yeah. Um, yeah. But then we also received another, um, yeah. what do you call it? The the noise measurement, right? Saying that the show was in compliance. So. Yes. Um, a blues guitarist, Tab Benoit. Apparently the show was louder than the samples concert in May, which we figured. Um, the results are still below the legal limit. There were multiple spikes into the 64 to 68 decibel range, but overall the LEQ, the liquid equal weighted average or something um, was, 59.3, again, well below the legal limit of 65 decibels. So hopefully that, I saw a um, insulating truck there last week or the week before. So hopefully when they've done the, their HVAC projects that it's even more, um, it, that the, the readings would be even lower. So we do have the building department on tap to do another reading, is that right? Yes, the other one, uh, my understanding was supposed to be after the project yep. is done. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. Other than that, um, just uh, I I would like to close the loop on the cordials conversation with Gombo. Um, I emailed. A, Attorney Seawall today and asked him for a clarification. Um, basically, I the documents that John from Gombo provided, um, they don't specifically say that the the beverages are cordials and liqueurs. Um, they do say how much sugar is in them. So I sent the documents to attorney Seawald and asked him if those documents um, suffice as products, the products being classified as cordials. Um, and that was, that was early this afternoon that I sent that. So I haven't heard back. Um, Jennifer, are you up to speed on the history here? How we came to that conclusion about the cordials? <clears throat> yes. I just read some prior meeting minutes going back to 2020. So I'm yep. now familiar with, um, okay. with other license issues and questions. And it's yep. uh, not to say it's clear, but it, it's clearer. It's, right. Yeah. It, yeah. One thing um, when we, so Gombo's the third or fourth, maybe cordial, but the very first one we did, as you know, was highbrow and 
I was sitting at the bar one night and they were pouring vodka and it was very surprising to see. Um, so we went through that whole, you know, we spent a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time chasing down how other communities do it, chasing down actual humans at the ABCC, which Helen did, um, and getting advice from attorney Seawald. But one thing that's interesting um, that occurred, I don't know, Helen and Anne, you guys probably remember, but at the meeting where we approved them, there was a restaurant owner who stayed for the entire meeting and at the end said, this is going to be a slippery slope um, in terms of compliance and how do you, how do you determine it? So I think it's kind of a known thing that um, there it appears porous, like how the interpretation of things are. So I, for myself, was super relieved when we finally came to the conclusion the last time, um, because I felt like we had very strong guidance from both the city solicitor and the ABCC in terms of what a cordial in the core is going to look like. So um, I'm curious to hear what attorney Seawald's thoughts are this go around and because it is, um, because there is, you know, for, for Gombo to have paperwork that completely contradicts what we were told, it is not helpful to anybody, especially restaurants. So. Um, I'm just, what do you mean by paperwork contradicting what we were told? We were, so the paperwork that, that Gombo gave you that you sent to attorney Seawall doesn't say anything about the bottles requiring cordial and liqueur to be marked on them or a tax stamp. It only requires a certain sugar percentage. Oh, no, these documents are actually like from the manufacturer showing. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like showing, yeah. I think he's, I think his intention was to show me that the, that the bottles that he's getting are, have more than two and a half percent sugar. But the, them. right. But those bottles were not on the list of cordials at the ABCC. Right. Sent yeah. No, they were. Right. Right. Um, so this is this is kind of like a ABCC problem. I think also because he um he also John also sent me an email from one of their the ABCC's like chief investigators and he copied and pasted the um cordial definition from Mass General Law, which is I guess where I'm kind of hung up because it yep. it says that it's all alcoholic beverages with two and a half percent or more sugar. Um, so why is that? I guess that seems different than what. When I called the ABCC, it sounded, yeah, that he said, you know, it's, it's simple. It just has to have this label, you know, and the stamp on it. And, yeah. and I was confused by that too, when I read that, that he said someone from the ABCC, I guess this investigator or whatever said, oh no, it's just the sugar content. So then it's like, okay. Yeah. It well, is, yeah, and we we really have to sort it out because the I mean the cost of a cordial license and the cost of a liquor license are astronomically different, and it's not it's not fair. And so that's kind of where we landed was let's be definitive about it, and the people who, you know who are paying for the all alcohol license should have a a decidedly different license, you know, different offerings versus the cordial, because otherwise it's just you know, it's it's very vague. So in this email from attorney Seawald, um, he said he, he pasted the definition and it said, the beverage must arrive at the licensed premises having been already mixed or redistilled so as to contain no less than two and a half percent sugar by weight. Any other alcoholic beverage including those infused with flavors that is not over two and a half sugar by weight cannot be served under a cordial liqueur license, even if mixed with a cordial or liqueur. Um, so right. that leads me to believe that if it is over two and a half percent, it is a cordial. And then it's, yeah, even though it might not have a label, that's the right. Point. Um, and then, and then he goes on to say, cordials and liqueurs are labeled and taxed as such through the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau. Therefore, a cordials liqueur licensee can only sell products that are labeled as cordial or liqueur. Applying this to the advertisement 
published by Mr. Brow, it is clear that Chipotle infused tequila, V1 cucumber vodka, and Bar Hill gin are not permissible under a cordial liqueur license. And for since that experience with highbrow for every for each cordial license we have approved i have specifically said that the bottle has to have a tax yeah. stamp on it and it has to say cordial and liqueur and so you know it's right and um, i mean i'd love to play the tape again but i'm sure you said it because we did because we were burned because back. of this yeah because we don't like it i think it i think the cordial license is awesome it's a great opportunity for restaurants especially in a landscape where we don't have enough liquor licenses it's an affordable way which which is makes it more equitable for for people to serve a variety of beverages so i am pro cordial license but it's it's bit like that was such a uh, I mean, to say a nightmare is an exaggeration, but we spent so much time um, trying to figure that out. And it it was, it, you know, I just, I don't want to go back to that level of time being put into something. I want to, I want us to be able to have made a decision and then move on from it. If our decision was wrong, then okay, then we have to make a change. I'm all for that as well, but um, I'm not convinced that our decision was wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm not either. I just, yeah. I just think, I don't know. I think someone along the line is an understanding. I don't know if it's the ABCC or Attorney Seawall. I don't, I don't know. Um, it's just not clear. So uh, hopefully he'll respond and either say, yes, these are efficient, sufficient. No, they're not. And then I can definitively give an answer to John because yep very argumentative and I just, I need um, a legal opinion. Yeah, yeah. And if, if we have to go back, I mean, I, I understand why he's pushing. Um, but if we do have in the, if we have to go back to the minutes of the meeting where it was approved for him and so that he has proof that I said it has to be labeled cordial liqueur and have a tax stamp on it. I think that that might be helpful to him to see. I don't know. Yeah, I can, but, I can absolutely do that. And in the meantime, I mean, if it if if he's pushing inappropriately, but in the meantime, Dirty Truth has Bar Hill gin on their cocktail menu. So they also have to be oh. notified that they can't be Maybe. serving that. And they're going to have the same response. And the other issue is the, the distributors are selling this stuff to them. So distributors are going up against what we're saying. Yeah, that's part of the problem and too. it's part of the problem and so and and again whatever we're we've taken our guidance from the abcc i'm not taking our guidance from distributors that's that's not our you know we don't we don't need to do that so i'm still confident in the decision that was made um but how you know how we're communicating that and who else has the cordial does jake's they have a jake's cordial have it, yeah yeah and so does Iconica. Right. Yeah. And is there is there any sense on the not to like change subject, but is there any sense on timing for the seven licenses? Yeah, it actually um it was just about approved last week. Um, and then they came back and wanted a certified approval letter of everything they changed, and they changed it um significantly to how we wrote it in that the four licenses that are designated to dirty truth teapot um uh i forget the other two the ones that lost the lottery um yeah. once they cease to use that license then they can transfer it to a new entity at the same location and that is not the spirit behind it that is not what the city wants to do um so we we um attorney seawall is pushing back with the legislature and i haven't i haven't heard back whether or not they're going to allow it do you know why they made that change i don't know and and we're all scratching our heads like because that's another one we spent a lot of time on <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's <laughs> it's like it's like what, what do they care what we're doing in our city and how we yeah it's just and well, are, so then sorry is it seven it's seven altogether though right it's seven altogether the other three well, yeah i'm curious the other 
three would is those are fine once once they is, get issued by the license commission um if it ceases to conduct business it comes back there's no possibility of a transfer so we're not sure why they included they they completely changed the intention behind the bill and then with those other three if they come into being is it do we announce and there's another lottery or is it a first come first serve whoever was in line to apply for a license if they have all their paperwork how does that work i think um the commission's gonna have to decide how they want how it wants to do it to issue the licenses maybe collect like i don't know a lottery collect applications for people who are interested in and i yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's sort of interesting to me that there's now going to be the set of licenses that are these lottery, you can't transfer them. It's not, it doesn't act like another license. And then there's the, all the other ones, which act normally, you know, where it's like they purchase the license and they can do what they want with it when they're, you know, they can sell it with the business. That's right. that's because those licenses aren't over quota licenses. They're not un under a special act. Uh, which are the ones that are coming to us are soon coming to us. Those are the no. So maybe I maybe I misunderstood the question. I guess, and I guess we can do whatever we want. But now, so now, if these seven come to us, there's seven plus however many we obtained under the previous mayor, right? There's a the other, there's previous lottery licenses. Yeah. I can't remember. Seven. Is it seven? There's four for businesses downtown. There's one for Fairfield and in suite. Um, and there's one for Smith College, I think. Okay. So there's like six out there, or there are there's two that are now I'm confused. So previously, like those, all six of those licenses act the way we're talking about these seven licenses will be that it's like a lottery and it comes back. Like basically it's not yours to keep. Um, you know, once you're done with the business, they come back to the city. Um, the, the four, okay. that's how those would. Okay. Come, that's how those would, would um, come back to the city with no transfer. I don't know what would happen with Fairfield and Suites. I think it's, I'd, I'd have to look, I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I guess maybe, what's the question? I I don't know. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm just, it's interesting. And I guess it's because you're saying these are over quota. Like we, because the state is essentially allowing the city to have more than our fair share. And it's based on population or something. Is based that on population, yeah licenses yeah. then we're saying we're going to treat these differently we're going to treat these well, Helen, this this reminds me of the, the hard conversations we had with sylvesters and that we had to explain to them that their license acted differently than some others because it was you know the parameters are different so i think annie that helen's saying that it's hard when we have licenses with restrictions because right the community is looking at one another and what they're doing with the license rather than uh, rather than the conditions of which that license was obtained. Right. Is that any clearer? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's just interesting because it's like if they if so these restaurants or whoever who come in to get these uh, get these lottery licenses. Yeah, it's just sort of an accident of timing or availability or whatever that they're they now um, cannot own and transfer those licenses. You know, because well, they never bought the license, right? They were never, yeah. they never spent everyone else hundreds of thousands of dollars on them. Yeah, yeah. And right. I think when the when the first four were obtained, it literally was in the spirit of economic development and creating more opportunities. Um, and so, hence the that clause that once it's no longer being used, it has to come back to the city so it can continue to behave in the same way. Right. Okay. And it's, you know, and it's, I'm sure, to the chagrin of, of some license holders who bought their licenses for six figures, you know, many yeah. years ago. Yeah. It's just, it's, 
I think I hope it's tiptoeing into um, where people don't have to buy licenses and spend that kind of money, and they just you know pay their license fee on a yearly basis, and you have your license. Right, like with wine and malt, and yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, and I guess it is right that yeah when you put it that way, it makes sense that they didn't have to buy them, so yeah, they are going to be treated so they can't use them as an asset to then resell them. Um, whereas if they want one that they can resell, they should talk to Eric Seward and maybe buy one of his. <laughs> you know? I mean, I like the idea of them being used in that spirit of driving the economy. You know, if one business isn't successful, it's an opportunity for another. So that like when we start, when we talk about how to handle the three, so four are going to go to the people who lost out on the most recent lotteries, right. then that leaves three. Um, you know, what if there's a new business in town? Because we've always asked on the application that it be a an existing wine and malt license mm -hmm. holder who in good standing. Um, you know, so cordial licenses, if they're not in good standing, will that, you know, so we have to determine what good standing means mm -hmm. for the cordial license before we enter into this, because all any any cordial license holder is going to be submitting an application, I would assume. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for talking that through with me. <laughs> of course. Um, and Annie, is there any, um, have you seen any movement on any of Eric's licenses? Uh, no, I have no. I have no, doc, no, no communication about the licenses, no. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's, there's been a walkthrough of the Calvin um, by a group that is looking to buy it. Um, yeah, that's in incredibly exciting. Yeah, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't get too excited, but right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anybody have anything else? Because I don't want to keep us longer than we need to be because this was such a um old style agenda. <laughs> Natasha, may I ask one question? Of course. Um, at the end of last meeting, you had mentioned um, communication with the departments just to avoid, yes. um, I, I think, kind of the uh, obstruction that we have with the, the planning commission and Bombex. And uh, are there next steps we can take? I mean, I, I have been thinking about that. And I was like, there, there's got to be a better way. Uh, a fairer way for the businesses, a fairer way for us. Um, any next steps there? Or is that something we should think about for the fall or? Um, one thing that I would, that I know is in motion was a new application software that was being started. Is that correct, Annie? Yeah. So I would like, I think it, it makes, so one of the issues that we specifically had with processing the Bombix license was we had no idea that building and fire weren't completely signed off on what we knew we were signing off on, right? Um, so if we have software that allows the application process to be signed off by multiple departments before it comes to us, then at least we know we have some checks and balances in terms of, because like we shouldn't have issued a license to a venue that should have had sprinklers. Right. The communication around whether or not it should have had sprinklers is in our purview, so we don't even have to worry about that particular piece. But when it comes to things like zoning changes, personally, I feel like that really should be a very broad conversation. And in this case, and I didn't go to any of the zoning meetings, I didn't go to the planning meetings, I only read the minutes. Um, it read to me like this was the automatic progression was the approval would be made and then it would just come to us to regulate. It would have been great if we'd had some sort of communication that that was happening so that we could prepare to regulate, like to, to sort of have a better sense of what what the concerns were, because there were real concerns in the neighbors. And I didn't read any of those things until after the fact when it became a real concern for us. Um, and I don't know how that gets fixed. I don't know. Well, someone mentioned to happened. me after the hearing, someone who kind of jumped on and heard parts of the hearing, they said that that in East Hampton, they have, I mean, it, you apply for a license and all of a sudden you, you have a hearing, you're in front of, you know, a representative from each department and, and you wouldn't have that 
um, license being granted to somebody that hasn't had the, the sprinkler checked, you know, that, right. that all yep. the parties are at the table. Yep. So, so I spoke with the mayor about this. I, have we met since then? I, I'm not sure. Um, but she thought it was a great idea. And um, uh, building and fire should absolutely be signing off on entertainment licenses. And I mean, to be fair, they they get my agenda every month. I have a distribution list I send a license commission agenda to, and um, the former building commissioner would always call and and question me and question some of the items and say, oh, like what are they what are they doing? What are they up to? So that it seems to be that stopped happening when. Um, the former commissioner retired. So um, they were getting notice. Um, I don't know how else, I mean, other than, other than that, I think I would just have to call and let them know this is happening and if there's any red flags. So are you, are you, would you, Annie, be in favor of having something on the application itself that the building department has to physically sign off on and fire department before it comes to us? I mean, I don't like the fact that I would have to like inter office a piece of paper to building to then sign and come back to me. It just seems cumbersome. Yeah. Um, but electronically, if we could, if I could, I, that's why, that's where this system is gonna solve all of these problems where right. application won't go to, won't be able to proceed to the next step until um, building and fire has signed off. Um, I mean, is an email sufficient? I mean, I think the, I, whatever, if that's coming eventually, that's great. That, that, sort of the system being forced to have a checks and balances in the meantime if if something comes on your desk that is a is a new entertainment venue then we have to ask them to step in we have yeah, to no, absolutely even yeah yep and if that means them coming to our meeting like they come we ask them to come to our meeting because I, I won't in good conscience, we can't approve another entertainment license for a new venue that hasn't had all of these um, issues addressed. Yeah. And I suspect it might not happen again, you know? Yeah, I know. So, same here, but like I said, if there's a process that we can really ensure it doesn't happen again, you know, instead of just hoping, right? When yep. That's all that I mean. And, and if Annie's confident in this uh, system upgrade, I mean, I'm definitely willing to to hold off and, and see what happens. But um, I I definitely agree with Tasha though, Annie, if you do see something funny on your desk, right? If we do have a brand new entertainment venue, we, we need to to bring in some others. We, we just have to. Yeah, no, I, that goes without saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah. Anything else? No. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Um, Natasha. Yes. Ellen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes.